This is my survival world, and for the last year and a half, I've been building map art in it. And today I'm going to show you the process of how I make one, from start to finish. But first let's talk about how maps work. Every block in the game will show up as one of 61 base colors. That means that most blocks will share a color. It also has two shades that you can get by changing the height of the block north of it. By making it lower you can get this lighter shade, and by making it higher you can get this darker shade. The Y level of the blocks does not actually matter. A map is 128 by 128 pixels. This doesn't change if you zoom it out. It just changes how the colors are chosen. So if you want to increase the resolution, you have to put maps together. And the reason I build them staircased instead of flat is to get more detail and more accurate colors. Because they're only 128 pixels and 180 colors, I have to check to make sure any image I'm making fits within that. Because things like gradients or glows or skies just will not work. So now that you know how maps work, let's talk about how you make art with them. I've opened the image I want to make in a pixel editor, and I've downscaled it to 128. We're just going to start in the north corner here, and we're going to look and see what color best represents this pixel. So it's looking at it, it's probably something like blue terracotta, maybe the light shade of it. So we'll just do that for this column here until we get to this pixel, which is probably magenta terracotta or purple terracotta. I can't really tell. This color here doesn't really exist in the game, so I'd have to substitute with something like Nylium or Redstone Blocks. And you just keep doing this for the entire column, and then you do the next and the next for the whole image. Now imagine doing that for an image like this, or a large map art like this. If that sounds really tedious, that's because it is. So I like to use an online converter to automate it. So let's load our image. I like to use every block except for water and no dithering. The converter leaves a lot of noise and artifacting, so I like to go into a pixel editor and just clean it up a bit before I download it. From here, you can use the online blueprint to build it block by block, but again, that's more tedious than it needs to be, so I use Lightmatica. It's a mod that lets you render a blueprint in the world that you can follow as you build. So now let's talk about what I've done in my world to make building the maps a little bit easier. I have this big black carpet area here, and that's just so I can build the maps over it and kind of shortcut the background. I also have this big storage system here. It holds a full map's worth, about 9.5 shulker boxes, of every item I need. The actual blocks I use is whatever is most easily farmable for that color, but there is one block that just ruins everything. I'm trying to keep this video to just talking about the process I use to make map art, but this one color has such an influence over which maps I can and can't make, I have to talk about it. Raw iron is the only block that will show up as this color on a map. But it's such a common color that I've had to cut it out of maps that I've made in the past. A full map like this will take 67,000 ore with Fortune 3. Even a small one like this is 13,000. It has stopped so many things before I've even started them. Thankfully for this map art, we don't need raw iron, just warp planks and redstone blocks, which have their own problems that I'll talk about later in the video. Now to get those 9.5 shulker boxes, I have a bunch of farms just scattered throughout my world. So here's a montage of me getting everything I need. So now that I have the blueprint and the blocks, it's time to do the hardest part of making a map, the inventory management. This is where Lightmatica is really useful because I can go in and essentially get a shopping list of every block I need. The first thing I do is I go to the bottom and I look at every block that I need a stack or less of, and I put those in a shulker box. That goes in my inventory with all of the blocks I'm working with at that time, along with stone, which is my support block. Now that I'm actually ready, it's time to start building.
it is now two days later. The map took about five and a half hours to build. I'm going to lock the map and add it to the wall. This is a great time to show my statistics. Things of note are a million jumps, almost a million mob kills. About 65 days of playtime and about a year with the world open. For the blocks and the items, 300,000 stone and almost a million pickaxe uses. And now that the map's done, it's time to clean up and get ready to work on the next. To make this process easier, I have 64 hopper minecarts that will run underneath the carpet and pick up the blocks as I break them. This is also why blocks like redstone and warp planks are such a pain, because you can't instantly mine them. But this is the end of the video. So if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. And if you want to help pick the next map art, you can join my Discord server where you can suggest new ones and vote on what I'm doing next.